Yo, what's going on everybody? Happy New Year. It is January 3rd, 2023 and it is 1.01 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. It means it's time for another live stream, our first live stream of 2023. Goodness, guys, it's been a long time since I've seen you and it's great to be back. I've got a bunch of packages that I'm going to open up for today. And I'm also a bad live streamer and I don't have my pocket knife around here. So we're going to try to figure out a way through it. I'm sure we'll be fine. Um, but we'll get through it. I've got like five or six packages to get through. It should be fun. Uh, but before we dive in any further, let's say hi to everyone listening in on the podcast on the audio only version. Hopefully you're getting your New Year's off to a good start running wise. Hopefully you're listening to this while you're on the run. Maybe you're doing some grit miles. I'm participating this time in winter grit. I think I've skipped the last two. I think I've only done one grit before and I think there's been three so far. I've done it once. So this is my second time doing it. Um, they're not paying me to do it or anything like that. Just full disclosure. I bought my own registration and I'm looking forward to logging some more miles. I've done two activities so far. So two runs, like 26 miles on the, no, 23 miles on the year so far. So off to a good start. Hopefully you're off to a good start too. Everyone listening to this and watching this on YouTube later after the fact, hopefully you're having a great year as well. It's early so far. We're not that deep into it, but hopefully it's a good one. All right, let's see who we have here in the chat. We've got uh, Eliza that says boxes. Yes, I've got many boxes. David Sachs is using the wave emoji to say hi to everybody. Uh, Energy Runner Things says, is this a gear haul? Ki kind of. It's more of a mail time than it is a gear haul. Um, I got one. I think there's one thing in here that may be under embargo. And then one thing that's like just should be super fun. And then one that's kind of interesting. So we'll see. And then there's a couple more packages too that I'm not sure where they are. But so we'll do some unboxing. I'm going to finish saying hi to a couple more people. Eric says, if I don't have a knife, I got to use your teeth like the rest of us. Maybe. I, you know, I think I'm going to try to use, I have a GoPro bolt lying around. Maybe I'll use the edge of that to try and break through some of the tape. Stephen C. 1984 says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Uh, and Moonwalker says, Happy Shoe Year. Sorry, I'll see myself out. There we go. That wasn't very loud. I'll get it louder for next time. Lucas H. says, Happy New Gear. <laughs> and Carlos Gregor says, Hey, from New Mexico. Happy 2023. Awesome. Um, Energy Runner says uh, that they are in uh, North Texas and the humidity has made my heart rate so high in my runs there. Ooh. You know what? Here in uh, Crystal Lake, it has been like, I think, seasonably warm, but maybe slightly warmer. So like over Christmas, it was like below negative fair, like below zero Fahrenheit for the highs. Right. And so like maybe we would get I, I'm pretty sure for the highs too, that it was one or two days, but it was super cold. And then since then, like the week before New Year, it's been in like the 40s. Sometimes it's in the 30s, but like in the 40s every day. So everything here is like weird. It's melty and wet and the air is very humid, although it's not bad here because it's like 38 degrees. It's actually some pretty good running weather, except for the fact that everything is really soggy. Um, but I am going to be heading to Texas, not North Texas, but I'm going to, I'm going to Houston in a couple of weeks. So that's one of the things I want to get done. Probably won't get it done today. Maybe tomorrow I'll put up a route for a uh, meetup run. I'll try to run by the river. Is there a river? There's a river down there, right? We'll try to run down there. We, I've done one before in Houston. We'll probably pick a similar route, if not the same exact route. Um, but yeah, I'll be putting that information out a couple of weeks, just a couple of weeks till the Houston Marathon. I'm not running, but I'm just going to go there and cheer everybody on. Nataku says, hey, Ko, happy new year. I'm going to be running the Cherry Blossom this year. I made the lottery. You totally inspired me to do it. Awesome. Um, you know what? Last year I did that with ASICs. No one from ASICs. You know, I got to talk to ASICs. See um, if we can work out a little bit of a calendar for this year. Uh, we probably should have figured that out at the end of last year. We didn't. So we're not going to have to, we're going to have to do that now. I was listening to Believe in the Runs um, year end recap. And they were talking about how they're already, they already know that they're going to do um, Cherry Blossom again this year. So um, I, I got, I got to get them more on top of things like they're on top of things. Dad on our Al says, yo, happy new year, everyone. Good to see you Al. And Adam Fear says, they're not paying you. You're in good company with Steven. Um, yeah. <laughs> Steve, Steven does uh, pay for, I think pays for all his own travel. I pay for, I wouldn't say most, but I pay for some of my own travel. You know. Lou Boy says, Co, happy New Year's. I think everyone wants to know, how are the Elliot Runners? I did bring them. 
I did bring them today, and uh, here they are. Elliot Runner. I got them very dirty. Not very dirty, but compared to how clean and neat they were when I got they got to me, I did the get, get them uh, pretty dirty. And um, the video for these will be going out tomorrow. So I filmed the narrative portion for it today. I went on a long run workout and then an easy run in these already. Um, they're good. They're good. I think that what'll be interesting in my mind is, well, okay, I'll, I'll cut to the chase and tell you like my very abbreviated, so I don't spoil the video for tomorrow. But my very abbreviated thoughts on the Elite Runner are, they're a great long, easy miles shoe. They're a little bit firm for my preferences, but I like really squishy shoes. But I think they're a little bit firm. And I think the shoe that they are most like is, uh, well, I won't spoil the shoe that I think they're actually most like. But I think that if you like the Endorphin Speed 3 on easy days, then I think you're going to like the Elliott Runner. I keep wanting to call it Trainer, but it's called the Elliott Runner. But the video will be out tomorrow. And uh, I make some interesting... Comp I, think, I think I made it interesting. I think I made it very interesting, hopefully. So we'll see. Not just like the visuals. The visuals, I think, will be good. But I think I made some interesting comparisons. So hopefully it's a video that you guys enjoy. All right. Um, let me scroll down. See if there's anything I need to um, catch up with you guys. Uh, Frank says that the Elliott Runner looks like a shoe for wearing on a yacht. Yeah, I think that, you know what? I think that this shoe would look at home pretty much just about anywhere. It does have like a navy stripe, you know? Uh, my understanding is that there's going to be at least two more different color drops of this shoe. Or at least that's the planning. I'm guessing it, it might depend on how well they sell. Um, but there's going to be a black upper with a gray sash and gray midsole. I didn't know you can make p backs gray, or I don't know if they're painting it or what, but I was told. I don't know if I'm supposed to share that, but I don't know. I don't. Remember. Someone else mentioned that they saw a, a picture of it, so I'm sure it's out. Um, JC says for Houston, the weather is not looking ideal, but in two weeks things could still change. Hmm. You know what? Selfishly, as someone that's not running the race, I hope it's I hope it's on a little on the warm side. As long as it's not raining, I just don't want to deal with rain. Um, Sober Gummy says, I just assumed the Elliott Runner was a walkabout shoe, like the Allbirds Wool Runner. Um, no, I think that they very much intend this to be a shoe that is run in, and I like it for running in. I didn't love it for my workout, um, but it is also very comfortable to wear all day long. So very comfortable, and I think they'll probably sell more of these for people to wear around than they will, although at the price and what I'm assuming will be limited quantities, they might not, but... I, I think that people will also really enjoy it for um, just walking around. Um, Energy Runner says that these shoes look like a Gucci shoe. You know, I'm not familiar enough with the Gucci, like, design aesthetic. Maybe this part here with the hash marks maybe could be kind of Gucci-ish. I don't know. Or unless you're using Gucci as an adjective rather than, like, a descriptor. Use lowercase g, so. I don't know. But, I mean, they do, they look very nice. They did look very nice. Mine still look nice, but now they're very dirty. I'm, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if they will, uh, like, I, I think I'm thinking at some point I might run them through the washing machine. I think probably for the hundred mile review, I'll get them super dirty and then also run them through the wash and fill them after like running through a washing machine. I'll like put them in a pillow, do that thing where you put them in like a, like a wash bag, put, take the laces out, put them in the washing machine, let them air dry, you know, so um eric says is it just me that doesn't dig the aesthetics on the shoe Eek, i lived through the 70s and 80s so seen that run that um i mean that's kind of the tracksmith vibe though right like the stuff that we wore in high school when we ran you know like i very much had a, a singlet in high school that looked exactly like the tracksmith singlet it just said my high school name on it you know um and it was actually like a mesh singlet like a basketball jersey you know, so I've run in, I've run in that before. So I think that's part of like the nostalgia that they're looking for. Uh, it's a, I mean, I think that it's like, it's almost like a Rorschach test. Cause like when you look at the shoe, I keep putting it away, but when you look at the shoe and squint, you could be like, I see a lot of different shoes here. So a lot of people that are heavy Pegasus runners see this back part and think Pegasus, but for, and I also think that there's a lot of similarity in the toe box, although this fits better than a Pegasus. But when I look at the outsole, I think that this is a Reebok float ride. Oh, wait.
I, this is probably not the best example because it's the trail version, but I have the Reebok Float Ride Trail. And this one actually does look quite different. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm imagining it. I maybe have to find an older version of the Reebok Float Ride Adventure or Energy rather than the Adventure version. But that's what I see in here. That's that pair of shoes that I keep saying I'm going to do something with and I never do something with. But I don't know. All right. Let's get to some boxes. All right. The first one that I'll do today is going to be this one. So this is something that you might have seen if you watched my um, runners weekend in Austin from the running event. This is NYX. This is that biosensor. So what you do is it looks like a continuous glucose monitor, but it's not a continuous glucose monitor. It's actually a sweat monitor. So in concept, it's similar to that Gatorade patch that Gatorade made like a couple of years ago. Who, 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 was there a sponsored athlete for that? I know, anyway, um, you put it on your arm, it measures how much you sweat and it tracks that. And so then it connects to your phone and it could tell you like when you need to drink more water. Um, and it lets you know how much sweat you're losing. But the other thing that I think is most interesting about it is then it measures like the composition of your sweat. And then it lets you know, like, hey, you're losing a lot of magnesium compared to most people, or maybe you're losing a lot more potassium. Um, and then it could figure out, comparing it to nutritional profiles of sport drinks that exist on the market, which one is the best one for you to rehydrate with. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, they have a little note in here for me. And then here's what the box looks like, taking the guessing out of hydration. And then... So what this is, it's a box and it looks kind of like a video card box, um, but it has one pod and four sensors and the four pa are patches and the patches are kind of like uh, the stickers that adhere to your skin. And that's what like, I guess, connects the scent, the pod to your skin. So like the sticker will be like this green part here. And then this pod that looks kind of like a foot pod um, goes on your arm and it'll go like over over there, kind of like a glucose monitor. See, I don't know, I don't know. I think I might save this, well, let's open it. As long as it's not super hard to open up, I can show you guys. Cause I do kind of want to film this too. It's a nice box. Pops open. A lot of advertising in the boxing. But here you go. So here's the sensor itself. It's just this thing. And here's a refill pack. And I can't remember how much they said that the stickers are, but they weren't cheap. Um, so it was kind of expensive. And so the way I think that they think of it is it's something that you might like do periodically. Um, so that way you're kind of like checking with yourself to make sure you're doing the right thing for hydration. It's not something that like, it's not like a foot pod where you're supposed to use it like every single run. I think I'm going to try to, I don't know if I'll test it today, but I, I do think I'm going to do a treadmill run today just because I'm short on time, but um, I am going to test that out on the treadmill because I think that'll get me a, a heavier sweat. You need to have like a certain amount of sweat for it to work, so you can't really use it on um, on the cold. Um, yeah, Aaron says, oh boy, more cyborg, cyborg technology to tell me what I already know about hydration, <laughs> but I guess interesting to try once. Yeah, we'll see if we find it useful, you know, because um, I know like what kind of I think that I need, but that's what will be interesting to see um, how it goes. Uh, Eliza says, I thought for a minute that this required skin puncturing. No, it does not. So it just sits on your skin. Now, I've been in talk with some brands that are trying to bring those that continuous glucose monitor for regular use um, to the US. And that does require skin puncturing like the glucose monitors do. But I've never, all the talks about that never materialize. So I haven't tested one of those yet. So that's that. Mm. Video Guy Man 7 says, what's the best way to find out about events during race weekends? I'll be in Houston for the marathon and I'll have to go to some meetups, shakeout runs, but I'm not a big Instagram guy. Um, I would say that the best way to find out about that stuff, um, and usually, I just was on a Zoom call about this, is for big, big races, there might be information about a month out. For something like Houston, I would start looking for stuff like two weeks out or like, like now or like next week. And there isn't really a great way to find that kind of information. So you just, if you're not big on Instagram, you got to think about like, um, if, 
if you know a run group in the area, they might know and you might be able to follow their Instagram account or email someone there. Or um, just like Google the brands that you like to see if any of the brand and, and, and like Houston Marathon. So I'd be like Tracksmith, Houston Marathon. As far as I know, Tracksmith's not going. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. But you could like, that's how I would do it for like Boston or Chicago or New York um, to see if they have any events. Because usually there's some sort of blog post or press release kind of thing that Google will be able to find. And so you kind of have to like search if you're not like actively following people, right? So like even my stuff, like I'll, I'll tell people about it here in the live stream um, and I'll post about it like in my Instagram stories. And then the RSVPs will exist and live in the Strava Run Club, which is all free stuff to do, but it's not like I'm not affiliated with the Houston Marathon at all. I don't even have a bib for the Houston Marathon. You know, so it's just kind of like you're going to have to, you know, it takes a little bit of legwork to kind of find it if you don't know. Um, One, I think one way to, to do it would be to be like, um, a lot, a lot of some of the races are starting to figure out that people want to be here for more than just race day. I'm trying to think of what race did I recently look at where in like the the race had a shakeout run. It might have been CIM. The race had a shakeout run that they had organized, so like a time when everyone can kind of get together if they wanted and just go run around for a couple of miles. You know, so there was stuff like that. So I think races are starting to figure that out, but usually they're all on like on the trailing edge. The leading edge of that is like, you know, influencers and smaller brands. All right, let's get to the next package. I'm really excited about this one. Um, this is something that I bought myself and it's actually a physical book. I haven't bought a physical book in a while. Probably the last physical book I bought was like a training manual. Um, but this is written by my friend Ryan Van Duzer. It's his book, The Long Way Home. He self-published this book. Um, it's about his journey, the kind of like the creation of Van Duzer. Um, I think it starts out after he was done with the Peace Corps and to get back home to Colorado, he just decided to ride a bike and he wrote a book about his adventure. Looks like there's some photos in here as well. Um, I asked him when the uh, audiobook version was going to come out because I was like, I don't really like reading physical things. I like to listen to books. Uh, and he's like, ah, I don't know. Maybe I'll sit down and just read it out loud on a YouTube live stream one day. And I'm like, all right, fine. That means that's probably never going to happen. So I bought the book. And uh, who knows how long it'll take me to read it because basically the moment I read a physical book, I just fall asleep. So we'll see. We'll try. I do have some travel coming up, so maybe I'll read the book on an airplane. That'll feel like a travel back in time, but I am excited. I wanted to support my friend and then also hear about the adventure because, you know, I actually don't know too much about the details of that adventure. So I think this will be fun. Lisa says, I need to buy that book. I, I mean, it's available. Oh, it's at Priority Bicycles. So he's selling it through, I'm, it's, I think, is that his bike sponsor? Um, a bike shop. So that's how I had to get it. Sean says, same Kapuzi, co snoozy. Yeah, as soon as you start reading, you fall asleep too. I just can't stay awake. Uh, Matthias Ventes says, the book is super fresh. I watch his channel every once and again. Yeah, you know, I get kind of like, it go in spurts, you know? And so then I'll binge like three or four adventures at once, you know, and then I take some time away and then I come back. So that's kind of how I watch it too. Lou Klein says, that looks like less than 200 pages. Let's see how many pages it is. You are incorrect. It's 204 pages. But, you know, some of the pages are pictures, so, I mean, maybe you're not counting that. I don't know. It's about 200 pages. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where I want the book to be as long as it needs to be to tell the story. So if it were 100 pages, I wouldn't be upset, I guess. You know. Mark says, I can't remember the last time I needed, I read a physical book. I It's very rare for me. Um, I have like a cookbooks and stuff actually on my nightstand right now, um, uh, is how to cook is by, it's a cookbook by Mark Bittman, how to cook everything vegetarian. I read like two or three recipes and then I fall asleep. <laughs> uh. Adam says reading is like a muscle start short and build your reading fitness. That's true. I I would just rather listen to it. That's the thing. 
<laughs> Eric says, I'm trying to ignore these comments about not reading actual books. La, 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 la. Covers his eyes and ears. Funny, funny. Uh, Lou just finished Running with the Buffaloes. Great read. I, I, that's a book I listen to as well. Mm, it's interesting. Mm, and uh, Mark Peterson says, books are jerks, a quote by Peter Griffin. That's super funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got, here's, here's the thing that I think might get me in trouble today. I don't, I don't think this is under embargo, but I'm going to show it to you guys. Um, Cause I think I posted, I think I posted a picture of this and Thomas was like, Oh man, you shouldn't have shown a picture of that. And I was like, well, too late. Um, so this is something that came in just a plain white box, which is how Mizuno shoes always come to me. So I'm going to show you this one, this one. Oh, this is not what I was expecting. This is the Mizuno wave rebellion flash. There's no note in here. All right, there's no note in here that says it's under embargo. But remember, Mizuno made um, that, there's that crazy Mizuno shoe that has like that paint splotch, like the camouflage, the zebra flage, um upper and midsole. There's a second shoe that comes in that like camouflage print. But the camouflage is so successful that people never realize it was two different shoes. There's the Wave Rebellion Pro and then the Wave Rebellion Flash. They sent me the Wave Rebellion Flash. Now, I thought they were going to send it to me in the um, camouflage version, which I kind of prefer to this one, although this one looks really clean and nice. Um, so we'll see if this one's any good. So last year, I got very excited about the Wave Rebellion um, because it had this like beaded foam, had a nylon plate in it, um, and it was supposed to be, from what I understood, it was supposed to be like an endorphin speed competitor. In practice, it ended up being a 12 millimeter drop shoe that I thought was really firm and the foam did not feel like it looked. Now this one, I think I'm feeling a lot of wave plate in here still, but the foam itself feels like it gives a little bit more. So I am cautiously optimistic about this one. I think I would be more excited if it was the, the paint version, but this one, I'm cautiously optimistic. Thomas is really bullish on Mizuno right now. He has the Wave Rebellion Pro. He really likes that one. Um, they said that they were going to send me one of those, but I missed out on the initial like influencer seating and review tester seating. Um, so they're going to said they were going to send me some once they have like the um, production colorway. So I'll be getting one of those. So looking forward to trying these out. I think this is going to, I mean, I think the idea is that it's a training companion. It's either a training companion to the Wave Rebellion Pro, or maybe it's kind of like a Meta Speed Edge or a Magic Speed. Well, I guess maybe Meta Speed Edge is a better one. Maybe it's like a 5K, 10K shoe. But we'll put it through some paces and we'll figure out what it's like. Uh, let's see. Eric says it's a sharp looking shoe. Lou Klein says, love that outsole. The outsole is really grippy. So it seems to be a very similar outsole setup to last year's Wave Rebellion. And that is very grippy. I know because I've been using last year's to mow the lawn. It's very good for mowing the lawn. The, the Wave Plate, very good for that stability. We've got a little bit of a hill on the side of the house. So I'm walking kind of like at a camber. It's really good. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, Mark says, wow, Mizuno. Would be nice to see lots more from them. I agree. I'm I'm rooting for Mizuno and like, but it's like caution because it's like some you know, last year with the Wave Rebellion, I was it was it was a bit of a letdown, you know. Energy Runner says looks expensive. Yeah, you know Mizuno shoes. I don't know what this one's gonna cost. I have no information on it. The only information I have is what's on the side. Uh, the destination who is it to? Its uh, nickname is Wave Rebellion Flash, and the purpose is. Prototype salesman. You see that? Purpose, prototype, salesman. <laughs> so I think this is like a, I'm sure this is a production version, but it's not like part of their production run, I think. So we'll see. Uh, Eric says, apparently Mizuno has a new trail shoe coming, which I wouldn't mind trying. Looks completely gnarly, but good to see Mizuno back in the game. Yeah, 
I, I, I agree. I mean, I ran in Mizuno's for my first marathon. So, like, I have a little bit of history with that brand. And so, uh, I'm, hope, I'm hoping for a resurgence, you know. Shannon says, that reminds me of the Aurora BL colorway. Meh. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, Dad Ryan says, Motivation Theory is really liking Mizuno. Nice. That's good to hear. Uh, and Luke Klein says, Midwest Winter is going to love that colorway. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe it'll help uh, thaw out the ground a little bit. I'll tell you what, though, everything is very mushy and muddy and gross out here right now because it got we had a hard freeze, a hard, hard freeze, and then now everything's above freezing and everything's just... I was walking my daughter to the bus stop this morning and there's like worms out because like the water is like wake is melting. Everything's melting. So all their worm holes are worm holes. Is that the right word? Their tunnels are all flooding. And so they're coming out, but then they come out and they freeze. So I just think it's a confusing time for the earthworms. Everything's really gross. <laughs> um, Corey Villancourt says, Saw your video yesterday, Mike, and hey, I'm a middle school teacher, and when you make on YouTube is basically what I make as a teacher, laughing, crying emoji, or tear, tearful laugh emoji. Um, you know, I think that's uh, a shame that uh, a middle schooler doesn't make what I make on YouTube, a middle school teacher, I mean, so uh, that, that stinks. Uh, I do think teachers all need to be paid more. Um, I may be a little bit biased because like half of my family at this point is teachers um, or educators uh, on some level at this point. So there's that. But um, yeah, uh, that is the video that came out yesterday. My annual what a YouTuber makes uh, video. Um, so you can guys go and check that out. I think a lot of you guys have watched it already. But that video came out yesterday. I think it's being well received. Um, it's performing well out of the last like compared to the last 10 videos I made. It was at number one when I last looked at it, I think, late last night. So, um, <laughs> Drake Aldry says, very good to mow the lawn in. What a ringing endorsement, LOL. I know, yeah, that's a running joke around here is like the shoes you don't like or the shoes that aren't good anymore because you've run in all your miles in them already. That They become the lawn mowing shoes. Um, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't. The, the My last lawn mowing shoe before the Wave Rebellion, not that I really have lawn mowing shoes because I haven't owned a lawn for that long. My last lawn mowing shoe before the Wave Rebellion was the Wave Rider 23, 24, something like that. No, I don't know. Rob Vance Bowen has some good PR news. PR'd my half marathon a few days ago, wore the Primex Strong, and it rained. Ooh, nice work. So even in slippery conditions, the Primex Strong treated you well. Congratulations, Rob. Mm. Yeah, Mentai says, you're gonna, I'm going to find the embargo note and the toe of the shoe during the first try-on. That would be a terrible place to put it. Usually when there's an embargo note, it's on top of the box. Or like when you open it, it's on it's on there. It's just so that way you, it's sure that you don't miss it. No, there's nothing in there. The insole is not removable, by the way. Let me make sure. Like I've, I'm, I'm not always great with the embargoes, but I'm always trying to comply. I never do it intentionally if I break an embargo. It's very stretchy though. I like this, but it's stretchy like silky, not like, uh, not like a knit. Pretty breathable. I can breathe right through it. Let's see how that goes. So like I feel like I've got a lot. I'm to get ready for Tokyo. I'm doing just a lot of mile repeat workouts. And I feel like that's a pretty versatile workout for testing out shoes. So like the next shoes I got to try out, I still have to test out the Takumi Sen 9, which I don't think I'm going to need to do a lot of testing. I have a feeling it's going to be a really good shoe. And then I'll put this one to, through the paces to test that one um, at some of those faster paces. And then I still have to test out the Hyperion Max, which I got like a month ago at this point now. You know, so I haven't tested that one. But So I got a lot of workouts coming up. All right, let's get another package here. We got two more. Mark says, if this year doesn't do well, I'd argue Skechers might be overtaking Mizuno. They could be in the running space. I think Mizuno is still gigantic in like baseball, volleyball, soccer, some of those other sports. All right, this is, I think, I forgot to take all my address labels off of this box, so I have to kind of hold it funny. 
Let's see if I can get it open. Because I don't have a knife. There we go. This is a package I was hoping to get before I went to Austin, but it ended up arriving really late. If it's what I think it is. But we'll see. I do have a lot of travel coming up. Oh man, they really taped this thing. Okay. This bolt is working pretty good as a package opener. I think I gotta open this whole thing. Oh boy. Oh, this is nice. All right. This is a brand new travel bag. So the name of the company is I Am Runbox. And uh, they sent me kind of like those uh, bike messenger type bags. The roll, roll is called roll top. Uh, I'm just looking for a new, a new bag to kind of travel in. I've been using my Osprey Daylight Plus, which is a really nice run commuting bag. But since I don't do any run commuting and I've been using that for travel, I was thinking I need something with a little bit more space that's easier to get kind of like cameras in and out, laptops in and out if I'm going through the airport. So basic structure of the bag is there is a little bit of a uh, laptop sleeve in there. It's kind of hard to show you, but I'll do a better job when I actually review the bag. Um, and there's some organization in here, but not a ton. Otherwise, it's just a giant kind of like bag to throw a bunch of stuff in and you're relying on your own kind of organizational tools to organize it. I feel like there's kind of two theories on bags. One is the bag is full of pockets and sleeves and compartments and stuff does all the organization for you. The other way is to just have one giant like cavern of space and you use your own like packing cubes and other things to organize. This is more of like a kind of in between because it has a little bit of uh, some zippers and pockets, but otherwise it's just really nice and big. And I feel like this would be good for traveling. Nice padded sleeves, pads for the back. Um, and let's see. I think that if you slide it through here, you can then put it on your roller bag. I think that there's a way to put it on the roller bag. That's one thing that my other bag was merely missing. And they also put this in here too. What is this? Oh, this is like uh, if you wanna add some waste pockets so you can add this to the bag and it goes around your waist. So you can have like, pockets like on your kidneys and on your flanks I guess for for quicker access to stuff doesn't seem like a very elegant solution I don't know that I'll actually use this but maybe I will we'll see so I'll take that one to Houston and then I also have I have three trips in January that I'm going on one with my family and two others for work ish stuff I guess so We'll, we'll see. In about a month, I'll do a review on that one, see if I end up liking it more than my um, run commuting bag. Mm. Let's see. Um. Yeah, Eliza wants to know, is there a laptop pocket inside? Yes, there is. Hopefully it'll fit in my Mac. I have a MacBook 15. So I think I think it'll fit in there. It looked pretty big. Um. Corey Villancourt wants to know, how do you think your body's going to react to the time change before Tokyo? Uh, I think I'm going to have a hard time with it, but I have a feeling I'm going to be getting to Tokyo, like not with like a ton of time there, you know? So I think that like the key, I, I think with a time change that that's drastic because it's like 13 hours different, maybe 12 hours different from where I am here. So it's the exact opposite is either to go like way ahead of time, like over a week ahead of time or go like two days before um and i think it's probably going to be closer to the two days before thing because then your body's just kind of like oh, i was on an airplane i'm disoriented anyway and it's not going to know i'm going to try and plan it so that way i sleep on the plane over there or depend or whatever like would be most beneficial for adjusting the time zone so hopefully like my transition the big bulk of it will happen on the airplane is when kind of kind of hoping 
Because, you know, all I need to do is if I need to fall asleep, I just bring a book, a physical book, and then I'll fall asleep right away. So I won't have any problems falling asleep on the airplane. <laughs> you know? Mm. All right. Um, Dad Runner Al says, deciding between Mach 5 or Rebel 3 as my next shoe. Any recommendations? Um... I think that I would, you know, I really am drawn frequently to the Rebel 3. I just really like it. It's a really, like, the design is great this year. Um, it just feels like a little bit more tidy of a shoe. That being said, I just finished the Mach 5. That video has probably come out next week, maybe like a week and a half from now, um, for like my 100-mile review, and it's treated me really well. It's been really versatile. Um, and I don't know. I'm trying to think i the rebel the fuel cell that's in the rebel 3 didn't feel like it bottomed out on me the fuel cell rebel 2 the fuel cell felt like it bottomed out on me and so i might be leaning towards the mach 4 or mach 5 if you like to have a little bit more volume in the mid you know what i mean like volume of the midsole foam underfoot but otherwise, I think that the Rebel 3 is a slightly more interesting shoe this year than the Mach 5 was. That's kind of where I'd put it. Mm, Matthias says, though, if anyone's still thinking about the Fuel Cell Rebel version 3s, check out the New Balance Outlet site. Significant price drop, or at least there was. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Shannon says, um, where'd it go? Uh, just here. Oh yeah. Ryan Van Duzer will feel so flattered. You read his book to fall asleep on the plane. <laughs> um, I had a chance to meet, um, uh, Tina Muir the other day at, um, at the running event and we were chatting and somehow we got on the topic of falling asleep. Oh, you know what? I was, I met, um, 300 pounds running. Uh, you know, I'm, I forget his name right now, but he has a really big Instagram following, bigger guy documenting his running journey. And he was, I'd met him at the kind of at the same time. We're all sitting around ch chatting and he's telling me that he's writing a book and you know, like he sent, he's like, can I send you a chapter so you can get a preview? And I'm like, I would love it. Um, but just so you know, it might take me a while to read it because as soon as I start reading something, I fall asleep. Um, and Tina's like, you do really? I'm like, yeah, I listen to lots of audiobooks. I go through like one to two books a month, but I just fall asleep the minute I um, just start reading. It's like a sedative. And I go, you know, it's actually worked in my favor because normally what I do is, um, people have a hard time going to sleep before a marathon. But since I know that I'll fall asleep, I just start reading right before I go, right? Like when I want to go to bed, like at eight o'clock, nine o'clock the night before a marathon. And usually if Tracksmith is there for the marathon, then I could pick up an issue of Meter Magazine and I just read Meter Magazine and fall asleep in like five minutes. And she thought that was really funny. She goes, can I tell the people that, cause she, her, her podcast is sponsored by Tracksmith. And she goes, can I tell the people at Tracksmith that you use their <laughs> Meter Magazine to fall asleep? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I would say don't, don't take it as an insult to the writing. The writing's really good. I enjoyed the article. There was one, an interview with Matt Taylor and uh, the CEO, I think he's the CEO or maybe the founder of L.L. Bean. And they're talking about their uh, their shared um, early fashion influences. So I read the whole article or most of it and then I fell asleep. So it's not that it wasn't good. It just reading makes me sleep. <laughs> but she thought that was really funny. And she thought that it was even funnier that I would admit that I use Tracksmith products to fall asleep. Before I brought that the, vet, the vegetarian cookbook upstairs, because I've had that vegetarian cookbook for like five years and I never finished like kind of perusing it. Um, I had like a Tracksmith lookbook and I was just looking through the, like it come to me in the mail and I was just using that to fall asleep. So <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> uh, um, Shannon says, my brother-in-law beat her at a trail race three weeks ago. He didn't know who she was, but now he goes around bragging about it. Yeah, I remember seeing like the results uh, from it because she lives in St. Louis. Um, and, uh, yeah, I remember saying that I was like, oh, I wonder if Shannon was at that race. Um, <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Ben says Martinez. It's Martinez. That's right. 
uh, 300 pounds running. His name is Martinez. He sent me the chapter to his book. I still haven't read it yet. So maybe I should read that before I dive into Ryan's book. But yeah. Um, and Scott says, new shoe for me, the Invincible 2. Do you still like them? I think the, I, I didn't run in the Invincible 2. I ran in the Invincible 1. I'm looking forward to when the Invincible, the Zoom, Nike Zoom X Invincible run flying it has the actual flying it on it. I might try it again. Although I think this year they're changing the shape of the midsole. So I think I'll probably end up trying it for version three. Um, I didn't try version two. It was very similar to version one. It looked like to me, there was no change in the midsole. The upper update was very minimal. Um, and it's an interesting shoe. It just, I like it. It doesn't like me all that much though. Um, and so like, I find it always like wanting, it's trying to get me to land more midfoot and run a little bit faster than my easy pace. So I always feel like it's trying to like, so it's kind of being like a bully to me and making me run a little bit different. But I think for the people that their stride matches up with it really well, I think that they love it. I think that's why they like, people like Dr. Josh has run like thousands of miles in each of his invincible runs. I think it, it matches his foot strike and gait really well. And there's lots of people that are like that. Just not me. It's all, it's good. I really like it. I just wish I could like it more, you know? Mm. Hmm. Frank says, my sleep has been shot since New Year's. So hard to get back on track. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was since before New Year's. Like once my kids go on break from school, like they don't go to bed till like midnight or like one o'clock in the morning and they're six and 10. Um, but they stay up cause either my wife's up and she doesn't mind when I, cause I still go to bed, um, before them, but my wife will be up or they'll be at grandma's house and grandma will be up or the cousins will be over or whatever. And so like, I'm not going to make them go to bed early just to go to bed early. You know, if their cousins are over, great. They can spend time. Um, but e when, even though I do go to bed before then, like them being up later keeps me up later. So my bedtime has been creeping from like nine o'clock to like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. I actually made it to New Year's, like past New Year's Eve. I actually stayed up past midnight this year, which is the first time I've done that in a long time. My sleep is very messed up, very messed up. All right. Let's get to the last package. So this last package, I started opening it, but then I was like, you know what? This is a package we should open up together. This one came from Running Warehouse and I was like, I don't remember ordering any shoes, but I also did just buy like a bunch of shoes and I couldn't remember like what had come in and what had not. So I thought maybe that was it, but then I opened it up and then I noticed that there was a card inside. So they had sent like a little holiday package for me. So let's open up this card. Oh, this is nice. So it's season's greeting from the Running Warehouse team in San Luis Obispo, California. So we got a bunch of the team there. Connor dead center. And then you got more people on the back. So this is a nice little card. And then let's see what else I got in here. So I think this is the package that they sent to like a lot of their friends, I guess. Um, because the first thing in here is extra thick cut teriyaki beef jerky that looks nice uh, my brother-in-law gave me um homemade deer jerky for christmas i gave it to my mom it's a nice thought though and then there's this etto conchigliete pasta dry pasta i'll definitely eat that there's a little card in here craft pastas from california Oh, nice, a oh, nice little local product. I always appreciate that. And then this smells delicious. It makes this entire box smell great. Honeyco roasted coffee, holiday blend, butterscotch, soft spice, cozy. Kind of a weird combination of words. And one's a flavor, two of them are flavors, and then the third one is a feeling. <laughs> Interesting, but it smells great. And then I got two more things in here. Oh, three more things. Aztec chocolate, mama ganache. Where's it made in? I bet you it's made in California, that's why. Ethically sourced ingredients, 
artisanal chocolate. Doesn't say where it's from, but I bet you it's probably like a Southern California thing. There's that. And then a pair of Saucony socks. It says running warehouse on the bottom of them. Cool. And then a running warehouse t-shirt. So it says running and then warehouse. That's not how they do it, but I thought I'd say it that way. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it looks like a cotton tee. Nice. So that's it. Um, yeah, Luke Klein says, a potpourri box and no actual shoes. Yeah, there's no shoes in it. That's okay. Didn't need to be shoes. It was a nice little, it was very thoughtful for them to send that. I, especially because I'm not in the, I'm not in the affiliate program. Eric says, don't you need disclosures for FCC rules? I kid, I kid. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, I don't think so. Not for this because I'm not a part of their affiliate program. But I, and I did tell you that they sent it to me as a gift. I think that's all I need to say, right? Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. Eliza said, that is a sweet gift box. Yeah, it was very sweet. And Mark Peterson says, no lie, I love those socks. All right. I need I need some new socks anyway, so this is good. I'm, you know, I, I usually have black socks. I'm starting to get into some white socks. And I've been collecting, like, like through things like this, blue socks. And I'm always like, how do I wear the blue socks? I don't know how to wear the blue socks. So I'll try. We'll, we'll give it a shot. Sean says, is it non-vegan jerky? No, I'm pretty sure it's just teriyaki beef jerky. It says beef jerky. Extra thin cut made from solid strips of beef. You know, I should open this. My parents were here for the holidays um, or for the New Year's holiday. They just left. I took them back to the airport two days ago. Um, but my mom would really like this. She likes jerky. Although she's trying to eat less meat these days. Um, yeah. It's, it's really thoughtful. It's really nice. Um, all right. Matt Legrand's here. Says, yo, Co, what's going on? What's going on, Matt? Good to see you. How are you? Um, hopefully you have a good new year. Mm. <laughs> Eric says, blue socks are just like normal socks. Just insert foot and hashtag enjoy. Okay. All right. I'll try that. I'll see. But, you know, like, doesn't it look weird? If You know, I don't know how to match socks to shoes. That's why I always pick black, because the black ones always go with it. So um, do I wear the blue socks with blue shoes, or do I not wear the blue socks? With, is that too much blue, unless they're matchy-matchy, you know? I don't know. Beta Show says, hi, host. What's going on, Beta Show? How are you? It says Beta Show, right? Yeah, Beta Show. Uh, Matt Grant said, I did have a good New Year's, family time all the time. That's always nice. I spent a lot of time with family. Although, like, the kids are at an age where, um, I don't know if I haven't told you guys about this, but they all started playing Roblox, my 6-year-old and my 10-year-old. And they do it in a way where they play Roblox with their cousins. So they'll be on their iPads for, like, hours at a time because I let them. And... But, like, I hear my cousins or their cousins, like, in the background. So they're chatting. They're playing. They're like, let's do this. Let's go here. Can I have a turn? You know, like, so they're playing with their family, but in front of an iPad. So I'm like, is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, my sister and her family were going to come. But um, at the last minute, they had, uh, they had a health exposure, so they couldn't come over. Um, but as a second best option, they did not, uh, they were able to play, all the cousins were able to play Roblox together. So that was nice at least, you know? And then like, I'll hear them in the background and I'll, if I'm sitting there, maybe I'm working or whatever and I hear them playing in the background, I'll be like, oh, hey, how was school today to like my niece or nephew? And they'll just chat. And it's like, oh, that's like one of the better conversations I've had with them in a while. So it's like, they're on their iPad, but we're interacting kind of. So I don't know. George Rome, Jorge Roman says, my kids do the same. Yeah. I feel like it's weird because like, it, I don't know. It's like when the kids find out that other kids have Roblox, they're like, you do? You know, so it's pretty amazing. It's kind of nice. It looks like my mom's here. Hi, mom. How are you? Glad that you made it home safely. My parents, fortunately, they did not have any travel issues. They traveled like the 
two, three days after Christmas, two days after Christmas, and then return like New Year's Day. And I was like, well, that still could be bad. But they didn't have, they didn't have a bad, they didn't, I don't think they had any issues at all. So it was good. Sean says, Roblox was a lifeline during the worst of the pandemic for my kiddos. Yeah, I could see that. You know, like some of those, like they do that. Here's how they play. And I think they're cheating when they do this, but this is how they play. They'll, they'll sit around and they'll all get in the same game in Roblox. And then one of them will call each other, like an audio call. And so like everyone in one room can hear everyone in the other room, you know, and that's how they communicate in the game. And they do that when they do that when they play Among Us too, which is definitely cheating. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's nice because then you hear everybody, you know, and they're they're and they're talking. So, um, Lisa says Fortnite, Minecraft, and Roblox all day every day for my son. Oh yeah, um, my kids never really got into Fortnite. I think they're a little on the young side for it. And then Minecraft, like they never got into Minecraft either. So I don't know. But my younger daughter watches a lot of Minecraft YouTube. And so, like, I'm not sure that she's aware that she can play it herself. You know what I mean? As far as she knows, it's like a game that she watches other that other a thing that other people do. You know, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Um. Kit says for the blue socks dilemma. Match the blue socks with something with a neutral color, such as white, black, or gray. Okay, so, but like, but then, all right, so let's say I got the white shoes and I put the blue socks on. I probably have to have something blue up top somewhere, right? Otherwise, it'd just be a weird splash of blue, wouldn't it? Because I'm not going to wear all white, right? So it's like, although I've tried doing that before. But I don't know. I'll figure it out. Eric says, mix and match. Enjoy life. You're a unicorn. Show your horn. <laughs> That's funny. Mm. Brandon Palmer says black sock gang color socks ruining the aesthetic yeah you know I wish I you know when in the corporate world like you know when everyone's wearing a suit and like a dark color tie you know socks were the way that you were allowed to kind of like express yourself and then people were like no wait your tie is the way you can express yourself you know um, so there was always that but people were always into the socks and I'm like uh, I don't know man I'm just going to go with black socks every day. The one thing that I do miss about, although not that it's a big problem right now, uh, one thing I do miss about um, the corporate world is that like all right, every day it was just like black suit or gray suit, white shirt, and, a, and just pick a tie. That was really easy. But these days I'm just like, whatever I'm going to run in is kind of what I'm, what I'm doing, so... I guess it's not like I'm spending a lot of time thinking about my apparel, I guess. I mean, in one way I am, but not that way, I guess. All right, guys. I think that's going to be it for today. Thanks for stopping by the unboxing. Thanks for coming to the live stream. It's good to see you guys again. Remember, tomorrow is going to be that um, the Tracksmith Elliott Runner review video. Um, and then we'll do another live stream. What's tomorrow going to be? Wednesday? Yeah, tomorrow will be Wednesday, so we'll just have another... I know it's supposed to be Trivia Tuesday. I probably won't have time to put a game together for tomorrow. So we'll just do another live stream tomorrow. Same kind of thing as today. Sit around, chat. Um, and uh, yeah, that'll be it. Hopefully I'll see you then. In the meantime, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.